Yo, what's up? And for the last few days, I've been working on my personal favorite build, Arakali Champion. So the footage you're seeing in the background is all my practicing of Uber Pinnacle bosses. This build, you know, kind of dumpstered all of them. I had a couple goals I wanted to do with an end league build. So one of them is that I've mentioned that Pinnacle bosses are my weakest part of my gameplay because when I fight them, I kind of panic. So I wanted to practice them. And two, Arakali Champion was nerfed from last league to this league. So last league, we had alternative gems. We had Ashes of the Stars still. But this league, we don't have those. They were replaced by Transfigured Gems, and there are no Transfigured Gems that work with Arakali Fang in any meaningful way. So without Ashes and, you know, the alternative gems, I just wanted to see, can I make it work? Then I wanted to try to make it work next league without charms. So I built this character, one, really expensive. This is like a 400 div build, but obviously I'll talk about how you can make it cheaper. But I also wanted to future-proof it. I wanted to be able to play this next league without charms or specters, and just be like, yep, I still have, you know, at least 22 million damage, 200,000 plus effective hit pull, and mission accomplished. That's what this build guide is pretty much about. So as usual, let's just rattle off a couple of quick questions. You know, what is this good at? What isn't it good at? And some things I learned along the way. So the only boss I didn't really like doing was Searing Exarch. Now, if you didn't know, I play Hardcore Trade 90% of the time. I've been playing Hardcore Trade for like eight years now. So when doing this, I wanted to try to do a Deathless. Unfortunately, this character did die one time. It was Searing Exarch. I was practicing the ball phase and I just didn't look at my flash charges and I was out of flash charges. So I was practicing how much I could tank, ran in, didn't have flash, died. But the other reason why, you know, Searing Exarch wasn't great was because the spiders count as a living object. So if you've ever done it with specters, you'll know what I mean. Basically, they can eat the balls. So this is a good thing and a bad thing. On one hand, you can send them with your curse and have them, you know, go block a wall and they take, they take no damage. So they just stand there and they just eat them and they just be like, yo, what's up? The bad news is that if you run too far, then they'll just respawn on you, detonate all the balls around you, and then you just spam your life flies and hope you survive. So it's the only boss that was definitely like kind of cringe, but all the other bosses, you know, I just swapped melee splash or melee fizz depending on the situation and it melted all of them. So I failed on the death list, but uh, you know, I learned a lot, so I was happy. So if you're wondering, can this MF, can it do the affliction league mechanic and all that stuff? Yes, of course, it can giga juice everything, death list, pro no problem, just put in a defiance of destiny. I'll have three different trees for different situations, bossing, mapping, and then magic find. I POB'd magic find about two and a half weeks ago when I was looking for builds and the numbers make sense, but I didn't test it. Um, sorry, I'm out of time, the gauntlet's tomorrow, so I gotta go prep for that. But it's there if you wanna, you know, try it or experiment yourself. And as a general tip, because of the way Arakali works and scales, it scales off of jewels more than anything. So if you're looking at this and you're like, 400 div, waft that, what the fuck? The jewels are hardcore pilled, right? What I mean by that is like, I always build everything for hardcore because I'm trying to simulate and practice. So what you could do is just take off the HP. This build with 4,500 HP would be completely fine. So if you just cut a ton of HP or just added a second jewel, you can go to 30 million damage and have your jewels just be worse, right? I spent 15 to 20 div per jewel sometimes, but you don't have to do that. You could cut off the HP on all of them. Immediately they go down to like three div each. And that's true for pretty much every piece of jewelry or everything you see me wearing. It's just like lower the HP by a little bit and all of a sudden it's 10 times cheaper. But I think that's it for the general. Because this is an end league, I'm not going to extreme depth like beginner budget or whatever. That'll be next league. I'll do that um, as a league start maybe. But for right now, this is just end league. So we're just going to talk about end league stuff. Now with all of my build guides, I will talk about like pad and stuff like that. I, I fucking detest pad. I hate it, so I will break down why this isn't pad and you do have 25 million damage real quick. But um, I do want to talk about one thing about Arakali Fang that I think, I don't know if a lot of people know. So every about, I think it's eight seconds, if you look on the ground here, you see this black stuff that pops up. It's when Desecrate despawns. So this is a set timer. I'm pretty sure it's eight seconds. And it disappears, right? So you just need to time when you spawn Arakali Fang around that. Um, if you never played Arakali Fang or whatever, you can despawn them by doing this. I have it set up so we have them for about a minute, I think, a minute and 20 seconds, something like that. And basically, you just put them on the ground, wait for this to remove, then you just put it down, hold Divine Mire, press the flask, and usually you'll get 18, and then you can do it again. And then we're running the life flash thing so this will recharge slowly and throughout a boss fight you know you just respawn them once every minute or so and there you go all right on to the breakdown real quick so like i said not going to be too long but for the pad section we're 15 wither stacks because of withering touch right here so this just means they take more chaos damage and that's pretty much the entire build guide <laughs> i mean i'm joking but that's really it you spawn 20 spiders they just hit stuff and you just kill it 
Um, you have to summon your golem every like, I don't know, 15 seconds or so to make it spawn and proc feeding frenzy. But the golem will die. I didn't go out of my way to try to min-max him alive. I would recommend Solaris if you're doing affliction stuff. For bossing, I took Brian King just because I didn't want to deal with stuns. And then Yugle is for mapping. Rice Lhasa, Rice, 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 uh, the fucking flask one. Holy shit. Is for bossing. So I'll leave it here on bossing, but yeah. We do have two minimum endurance charges, but I mean, I'm not going to put this on for that extra third, but yeah, we have two at all times. We have Onslaught from our charm. Obviously, we're champions, so we're fortified. This is part of the charm because we have 20 spiders, so this counts. And this is really important. Uh, have you used a minion skill recently? Flesh Offering is your minion skill, right? So, you know, you use that, boom. And uh, yeah, without this, we lose 5 million damage. So, yeah. But that's it for the calculation. It's very straightforward. You spawn spider, spider run at stuff, spider kill stuff. Now, in terms of tankiness, it is very much this tanky. I did go out of my way to try to get it around 100,000. So, mission accomplished. All right, so the build is level 100. But as usual, you know, you add more jewels as you go. Uh, the simplest truth is that the build is Giga Tank. I went out of my way to make it, you know, ridiculous. 500,000 effective hit pull is absolutely absurd. Um, all of this and stuff. And the, the reason we're so tanky is just because champion and a lot of things going on. I'm not going to go in super, super duper depth, but basically devouring diadems so we can run all of our auras and put this on. Every single little thing you're seeing here. So if you were like, hey, I want to copy, copy his gear exactly. Well, every single thing here is min max. So I have just enough decks and int to, you know, cast my skills and stuff like that. So keep in mind, obviously, there's int nodes, there's, you know, strength nodes and dex nodes and shit right here. So if you don't have the exact same, you know, feel free to take those. Obviously, this is a bit absurd damage, but I figured if I was going end league, I wanted to min max the fuck out of it, right? The squire even has a good corruption to make it so we take less fizz damage. You know, the fourth vow, um, along with the Zabakwa, is, you know, where we're getting a lot of that mitigation from. And my fourth vow is, you know, 6% life. Um, didn't care for any damage obviously because there's nothing that you can get the only other thing i'd say is maybe to reduce crit that's about it though so the gloves uh like i said everything on this piece of gear and everything is very much min max so i needed you know 27 percent or so chaos res i needed high reses in general and i wanted you know tier one life i didn't want to negotiate i didn't want to take less so i just rolled these or deafening envies and deafening greeds until i got the reses i was happy with and then i crafted mini damage and then obviously we're barely over suppression cap and again, like I said, our charms are literally no suppression, nothing. So we're future proof for next week. I rolled these with the deafening essences of spite, the intelligence one. I really needed the intelligence. I needed like 160 at the time when I was making these. So I just rolled those, got tier one suppression, and I wanted a res. So, you know, these took a long time. Everything here obviously took a lot to make. I don't even remember how much, but I just bought in bulk a bunch of essences. But yeah, we're getting our int solved here, suppression here. I did need the avoid elements because we wanted to be element immune. That's where storm shroud comes in. So the trick here is that if you want to become element immune, you get a ghastly jewel with like 40% or so shock, and then you get a hundred percent increased effect here. Right? So that's just, you know, like 80 something. And then on the boots, you get element avoidance or shock avoidance. And there you go. Now you're hundred percent avoid element, which means that, you know, bosses become significantly easier. And so does, you know, affliction mapping strangle gasp. Obviously you do not need this. This is like 50 div. You can wear defiance of destiny and only lose like 2 million damage it's not a big deal but i never used one before so i figured fuck it why not i want to use one whispers of doom is your double curse prismatic skin is two all res influence is aura effect and golem's blood is life regen so just a lot of tanky a lot of defensive stuff here i did want to get a one all max res but there was only one for sale and he went offline so i said eh, all right whatever the rings i just rolled with yellow juice uh, both of them i went with life because i was very specific about what, what i needed so i just rolled these for reses i catalyst i think both of them and i wanted minimum endurance charge on the suffixes for both so just harvest juice and fractured life the jewels straight up this is where you save your money the jewels are obviously extremely expensive all this other stuff is kind of like yeah you need this for reses these are expensive, but you know, they're not 400 divines, right? Even the squire was only 15 div. The jewels are where the money comes from. This is where I spent 10 to 30 div, maybe each jewel. And the truth is, if you want to be cheaper, then just take off a damage roll, right? These are all tier two minimum fizz that go down to tier three fizz or just remove life in general, right? Obviously, for my purposes, I wanted to tank how tanky could I be for hardcore next league. But obviously for you, you can go down to 4600 HP and you'll be completely fine. So if you cut off one mod on all these life or fizz damage lower or attack speed, you know, whatever it is, that's how you save money. These will all go from like 15, 20 div down to like four, three, two div. And a little tip, uh, fizz damage is the better. There's fizz and chaos. You can do both. 
but mathematically speaking, physical damage is better than just chaos damage to attacks. So if you can, you would want, you know, tier three fizz over tier two chaos because they're about the same. But again, you know, if you want to search for these, you can look out for fizz or chaos. All right. So on the, on the topic of flasks real quick, here is the absolute biggest tip I can give you. If you've ever watched a Ben, I'm Exile, Steel Mage, Scissoring, anybody, anybody who's hardcore challenge, the gauntlet's coming up literally tomorrow. You'll see people do this, you know, a couple days from now when they do bosses. This is the max charge trick. Now there's two ways you can do this, right? So basically I'm spamming one and two. These have 140 charges each, right? So if I'm getting hit by Maven Cascade or I'm in ball phase of Searing Exarch or whatever it is, you're getting hit by a lot of shit, Serious Beam, you can just obviously spam one and two. And when you finally take damage, right? You can just spam these. And they have so many charges that you will just heal. The point is that you're just so tanky that you can just survive two hits pretty much of everything and you just spam your flask and you're just probably not gonna die. Once you get to a certain point of tankiness, you just stop dying. Now, here's the thing. There's another thing you can do. Uh, let's drop this and do this. And if you take recover 4% of life when you use a flask, if these don't have a mod like remove poison or anything like that, you can, without even being hit, like let's say I know I'm about to fucking jump into a ball from Searing Exarch or I'm about to get hit by Serious Beam and I know I'm gonna take damage. Well, to amplify this more, you can preemptively spam it and just use them even though you haven't been hit so there's two ways to do it this is definitely the more like you know when you're going to take damage and you're not spamming them for me personally i like to just not run that and i just use them when i knew i was about to take damage i would just spam them but that's the trick this is how people tank stuff when they're playing jug and they're tanking uh uber searing x arc and, and Sirius and stuff like that they do one of these two versions and it very much does need to be just instant flask. But this is how, um, even though I was like, I probably should die here. I would just, you know, spam the flask and there you go. It's something that triple G has never removed and people have been asking for it to be removed, but they never did. So it's been two and a half, three years, I think, since we've known about this and they, they don't care. So we, we use it and until they tell us not to use it, we're not going to change it. And there's been, you know, eight or seven gauntlets since we've discovered this thing. So if they don't change it, why would we stop using it? So that's how people, you know, use these flasks. And that's why there's two flasks here for the bossing version. These charms are expensive. I didn't even, I couldn't afford 3%, but basically it just amplifies the fourth vow elemental damage. Um, and you can take it off. You can see that, you know, our hit goes down a little bit, but our effective HP is what affects the most. And then the other charm is the same thing, which is an endurance charge, but we already have two minimum. So we don't really care about that. And the other one is the only thing that I probably can't replace next league. And that's all res with onslaught. But if you take this off, we only lose uh, like two. Well, I, I take it off before you lose two million damage, which I don't really care about. So for me, next league, that's completely future proof. Uh, when fighting bosses, you always want gain three charges. There's not much to say there. Anamanu's gaze. Basically, once you get enough ghastly jewels, this gives you, you know, 6% more damage per ghastly jewel. Um, this is how your spiders do more and more and more damage. So pretty sick, uh, really cheap at the time of recording this thing. The green nightmare is how we get our suppression capped. Um, these are available next league, you know, from breach. They're, they're pretty expensive, but yeah, a little bit of extra suppression is how we, you know, solve this. Otherwise I would have just used a charm instead. And then the glorious vanity of Zabakwa has to be of Zabakwa to, you know, get divine flesh. For me, I looked for one that was either chaos res or fizz. And I found one with both that actually had, you know, useful stats over here, some reses, some cold res stuff like that i think it had a minion damage yeah one minion damage so I, this is only like one div because obviously who the fuck knows how these work if you don't know how to find these it's this button right here um look up a video that will explain this whole thing i don't even understand exactly how it works but i understand it enough to you know be able to buy my jewels so max chaos res big fizz get big tank and we're happy the watcher's eye i just went for double determination there's basically nothing that you can get that's actually useful on this because you know we're running spiders and we're not self-casting and stuff so just double determination to you know just get us a little bit extra tanky and that's pretty much it um like i said you know the jewels obviously are all fizz damage percent damage but one thing i will say is percent damage is better than attack speed so that's why all of these are percent damage unless for some reason i couldn't afford you know what i needed so on this i needed the dex in at one point but obviously as you can see i don't need it anymore because i fixed it accidentally later down the road but yeah the jewels are all just percent damage life all that stuff i didn't settle on any of them some were 15 div some were 25 and that's it for the build um obviously there is the there's a mapping version that's just a defiance of destiny swap and then there's the MF version. Like I said, I think I said earlier, I didn't experiment this, didn't test with it, but I did POB this about three weeks ago. So 
it should work um over here in the skills you got bossing you got mf and then you know the tree same thing bossing and there's the mf version um you know it's just like a jewel and stuff like that so if you want to try that go ahead i didn't test it myself well i tested it a little bit when i was in maps but i didn't extensively test it but that should be it for the build like I said, my favorite build. I really like it. I enjoy it. It's a little jank because the Arcali spiders are a little annoying sometimes, but at the same time, something about that makes me kind of love it. It's kind of jank and a little crap sometimes, but most of the time it's pretty fun and it does a shit ton of damage. That's probably the biggest reason I picked it for my end league is because it feels like the more money you put into it, the more you get out of it. Kind of like an int stacker or a deck stacker. Those are going to be the other choices I was going to pick, but I settled on this. And yeah, mission accomplished. Um, I'm happy to say that my favorite build is still completely viable and... I'll probably play it again next league, but uh, obviously, you know, we're still in the Affliction League. But this is my last build for the Affliction League. After this, it's just Gauntlet, and then I'll probably just be talking about the next league stuff when it comes up. So that's it. Affliction League was fun. GG. Have a good one. Later.